It gave me great pleasure uh, earlier today to, to introduce to the, the, the platform uh, the, the former MP for Copeland. And it really gives me also really great pleasure to introduce the current MP for Copeland. Uh, so, Trudy, and I think it's one of the things I thought, I mean, after standing in a by-election four months later, I had to stand again in a, in, a, in, a, in a snap general election. I don't know if that's a record or not, but it probably deserves to be one. Trudy, the floor's yours. Thank you very much. Uh, no, I don't actually think it was a record, um, but it was, it was quite tough. That's certainly true to say. Um, so I was asked to really speak today to discuss how important nuclear is to my community. And that's really easy for me to do. Um, I was born and brought up here. I was actually brought up in Seascale, which is the village closest to Sellafield. My maternal grandfather is a farmer. My paternal grandfather was a miner. And my father worked out in the North Sea oil rigs when I was young. Growing up in Seascale, it was quite challenging in the early 80s. I'm not sure whether the professor is still here, but um, he showed a badge, I've been to Sellafield, and made a joke about how it clears the underground. Well, quite frankly, it was jokes like that that really upset my childhood and damaged our opportunity for tourism. So I would say that we don't need jokes like that. They're unwelcome. They're unhelpful and they're unprofessional. I'm actually really proud to have nuclear so close to my home. I'm incredibly proud of the world-class skills that we've got in this area and how we've been international leaders for so long. And in terms of my family, it absolutely puts the food on, on our table and has done when I was a child because my father left the North Sea oil rigs to work closer to home he got a job as a commissioning engineer at Thorpe and has recently came out of his retirement for probably the tenth time to go back to work at Sellafield at age 65. My husband, for 38 years, has worked as a Class A welder on Sellafield site and his skills have been used to uh, fix up some of the wind turbines that had cracked in Scotland and down in Great Yarmouth because he had the skills to be able to be dangled 220 feet high. He also has the skills in welding zirconium and titanium, really internationally renowned, highly regarded skills. When I left Wyndham School, I very much felt that the measure of my success would be in how many miles I managed to escape West Cumbria, and that was partly because of those comments I made earlier about living so close to the nuclear industry in the early 80s. Well, I stayed around. My first job was actually at Sellafield. I've been a, a technical clerk, van driver, receptionist at Thought Management Centre, lots of things for about six years. Meanwhile, my little brother, he did very well. He went off to Newcastle, got his degree in computer science, and went to work for a global company down in Bristol. And I've always been very proud of him. But the irony is today, that company was Atkins, and they're now very heavily based in this community, and he's back at home living with mum and dad. <laughs> and I think what that does demonstrate is skills in the oil and gas industry, skills as a cyber consultant, and skills as a, as a welder, a craftsperson, are incredibly highly regarded in this community. When the professor, you can tell he's really struck a chord, quite a discord actually. <laughs> when the professor was speaking yesterday about the fact that we would only put up with a GDF because we're desperate, absolute rubbish. We have you know, the, the, the best skills in the world right here in Copeland. And that's why I would certainly like to open that discussion on um, geological uh, disposal facility. I would also like to open up the discussion on small modular um, reactors because I want to ensure that we do have a nuclear future and when the gentleman to my left stood down it was it was disappointing because I knew how passionate Jamie had been championing the nuclear industry and my initial thought was who is going to step up who is going to champion the nuclear 
sector for us because that's how we're going to get the road, rail and the digital improvements. That's how we're going to get the improvements in our health and also in our education. I was pleased that Jamie mentioned uh, Westlake's Academy because I think that's a fine example of how the nuclear industry right here in Copeland is supporting our young people. And there was a really, you know, a long list of socio-economic projects that we can talk about quite easily. I know from my own experience working in the community, initially because our school was threatened with closure, taking a long hard look at our village, what has gone wrong with my little village in Bootle? And it was really um, understanding what the opportunity ahead was. That gave us the confidence to fight for our school, but not just the school, fight for the village as well. Because we have a unique opportunity to create what's often called a legacy, and for me that's something that a dead person leaves behind. <laughs> create a springboard for our future. So it's really wonderful to be here today with all of these experts, most of them very positive and switched on about the future. I would certainly like to raise the opportunity on the uh, government's agenda for small modular reactors, definitely for um, GDF and of course new nuclear. But regardless all of all of that, we've got fantastic decommissioning opportunities as well across the oil and gas industry. Reading the Sellafield Corporate Plan, it talks about Sellafield being an anchor and support and diversification. And there have been hints that Sellafield perhaps shouldn't play too great a part in the future socioeconomics, but certainly in this area, it's what our community absolutely expects. They expect that Sellafield will support diversification and support our future. So I feel it's, it's, uh, it's just not right that the NDA or Sellafield could could take the view that they shouldn't be supporting socioeconomics as well as they have been. I'd like to see more of that. And I'd also like to decode the message. How can Sellafield be the anchor business and support the supply chain when the intellectual property is still held at Sellafield? We know of many individuals who have, um, who have left site to set up their own businesses, but they're finding it tough, most definitely. Sellafield is the anchor business. Um, we need to find a better way to support those small, medium-sized enterprises from growing further. And I'm not sure what the answer to that is. I certainly feel that we need to be better in government at recognising and celebrating our nuclear success stories. And I'm really pleased that Jake Berry is coming to Copeland tomorrow night, the Northern Powerhouse Minister. I was absolutely disgusted, quite frankly, when I looked at the Northern Powerhouse website and Cumbria didn't even feature. Considering the amount of science and technology and research and development and the industrial expertise that we have in this area, for us not to feature in the Northern Powerhouse, clearly that needs to change and Jake Berry will certainly get that message tomorrow night from the 60 supply chain businesses that are coming along. So I think that's really it from me. Um, I'm delighted to be invited here today to speak. And I look really for um, an ask from businesses. I want to be the amplifier in government that champions the nuclear sector, but also looks at opportunities across oil and gas industries. And to challenge the views that we heard yesterday about we've only got nuclear because there's nothing else. That is absolute rubbish and I want to challenge that at the highest level. Thank you very much. <laughs>